With so many great shows to watch nowadays, it isn't surprising that some have fallen through the cracks. Is he alive? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 underrated TV shows of the 21st century. Miles is missing! What? Uh, I, I went to say goodnight to him, and he wasn't there. He ran away! Did you check eight inches away from where you left him? For this list, we're taking a look at live action shows from the past decade and a half that deserve far more recognition. I felt awful for lying, but how scary could the movie really be? Turns out, it was scary. We've excluded shows like Community, which have been underappreciated in the past, but have found a passionate cult following over time. Why are there books in an air duct? Why is there hot sauce in the bathroom? It's Greendale. Number 10, The River. You came to me. You sailed on my waters to steal my secrets. You know better men have died for this. You're nothing. This ABC thriller was a bit like Lost. What? With a found footage twist. Pero cuando dejas entrar, los espíritus no se caen. Unsurprisingly, it was co-created by Oren Pelly of Paranormal Activity. What am I doing? What am I doing? Since The River came out around the same time we were getting a ton of Lost and Paranormal Activity wannabes, though, many simply wrote the show off as another ripoff. Life and death are the same. Had they stuck with the river, however, audiences would have found it had terrific atmosphere, a creepy setting, and a strong overarching mystery concerning the disappearance of Emmett Cole. As a kid, I used to watch my father on TV, and the voice would come up, next week Emmett Cole may not survive what he finds in the cave. Sadly, fans only got eight episodes before its cancellation. I, I, could, always, I could survive anything as long as I just kept working doing the show. So that's what I'll keep doing. Number nine, review. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot more to say about that. It was extremely unpleasant and should be avoided at all costs. Eating 15 pancakes, half a star. Review is easily among the funniest and most original comedies not nearly enough people are talking about. What's it like to have road rage? <laughs> The show is carried by an uproarious performance from Andrew Daly as Forrest McNeil, a critic who sets out to review life itself. Okay, so I have tried cocaine, cigarettes, alcohol, didn't get addicted to any of those, but there's one more thing I need to try. Cocaine! <laughs> Forrest will take on any request, from engaging in orgies to venturing into outer space to divorcing his beloved wife. I want a divorce. <laughs> Forrest's journey demonstrates that life is full of highs and lows. No matter what, though, every facet of life has potential for a laugh. It's our one and only prom night. I hope you don't mind if we get a bunch of these. Let's do one where we're both flying toward the camera, okay? Number eight, Pushing Daisies. Mr. Moore, I'm sorry to inform you, but you've been eaten by Bubba the shark. Did everybody cry? Oh, of course they did. I'm the fan fave. Poor Brian Fuller. He's one of television's most innovative storytellers, but all of his shows get prematurely canceled. The loss we're still most distraught over is Pushing Daisies. What if someone from Betty's Bees finds out you're a spy? Spying is a lot like sabotage in that they kill you for it. That's what you do with spies and saboteurs. You kill them. With the whimsy of Dr. Seuss and dark humor of Roald Dahl, this series follows a pie maker named Ned, who has the peculiar ability to bring dead things back to life. Freeze a burn. Dead. Bill Richter, Uber Life Life Insurance. If you've got big problems, we've got bigger solutions. Playing God always comes with a price, however. But there was one more thing about touching dead things that young Ned didn't know, and he learned it in the most unfortunate way. Full of colorful production values, sharp writing, and lively performances, Pushing Daisies is one show that desperately needs to be resurrected. Sorry, I'm late. Number seven, episodes. He hates everything. Your thing? He doesn't even want to shoot a pilot. He wants to go straight to series. I like the sound of that. I don't. That just means we get to skip limbo and go straight to hell. Any writer trying to make it in Hollywood can identify with episodes. This comedy follows a couple of British writers who are asked to adapt their acclaimed British sitcom for American audiences. I'm telling you, an American version would be huge. It could be like The Office meets 
our show? Yes. Upon arriving in LA, however, they discover that nobody is really interested in their original creation. Um, yes? Well, is it me? Or does, does anybody else feel like he comes off a, a bit too English? To make matters more complicated, they have to deal with an egotistical Matt LeBlanc, who gives an exaggerated portrayal of himself. No, no, I need him now. Because I'm at NBC about to go into a meeting and they think I'm f***ing me, which I am not. While not a runaway hit, Episodes is a smart parody of writers, actors, and the hellish process of making a TV series work. Oh, good. The irony bus is here. Number six, The Tick. Who was that blue stranger? He was The Tick. Just as the animated version of The Tick stood out as one of our most criminally underrated cartoon series, why would they send a superhero of my caliber to a place like this? This short-lived live-action adaptation never received the widespread audience it deserved. Another urban myth dispelled. Ninjas don't bounce. The Tick maintained the same clever superhero satire fans had come to expect from this franchise. But the showrunners also managed to inject a slightly more adult, sitcom-oriented tone reminiscent of Seinfeld. Well, that's really not fair. <laughs> I know. A lack of support from the Fox network amounted to the show's untimely cancellation. But Patrick Warburton just might return in a proposed revival. He stands triumphant. Another fallen fiend behind him. You can tell just by looking at him that he's got some pretty heavy things on his mind. Number five, happy endings. I know there's nothing that I can say. Please know that I'm so sorry. So is that guy your boyfriend, by the way? Who? Bo? Oh, of course his name is Bo. He probably shaves his toes. Based on its promos, most audiences assumed that Happy Endings was just another uninspired Friends retread. Did you? Yes. What many pegged as a lousy mid-season replacement, though, turned out to be one of television's most overlooked gems. So, Jackie, love your hat. Complete with a diverse cast of endearing characters and fast-paced dialogue, Happy Endings would have been a runaway success if the network had marketed it properly. Okay, you're playing ping pong against Jude Law. <laughs> you're brewing coffee for Glenn Close. Uh, guys, you know I sell clothes here. Nice clothes? Alas, the series was canceled after three seasons due to poor scheduling, and it failed to find a new home elsewhere. We are trying too hard. Ioni wears an empty fanny pack everywhere. Atticus spends his weekends at yard sales scrounging around for jean shorts, plus his name is Atticus. A sad ending to a truly wonderful show. Thanks. It's signed by Turtle from Entourage. Number four, Banshee. Banshee. It's kind of a strange name for a town, don't you think? <laughs> nah, it's just a town like any other. As far as original programs go, Cinemax hasn't quite reached the same level of recognition as other premium channels. To leave these people alone. Time for negotiating is past. They'll all pay now. Sakes. Nevertheless, if the network continues to produce series like Banshee, we're optimistic that it can compete with the likes of HBO and Showtime. <laughs> Dripping with style, atmosphere, and dread, Banshee tells the story of an ex-convict who steals the identity of a murdered sheriff. No, I'm not telling you anything. Until you tell me why you came so far for an asshole like Jason Hood. Now, he walks a fine line between justice and criminal activity, amounting to one of the most complex and enigmatic anti-heroes of this generation. Now, who the f are you? You kidding me? I look like a f***ing comedian. You look like two f***ing comedians. Number three, Party Down. You see the grain? The, uh, I wasn't aware a lime had a grain, Ron, but... <laughs> Uh, you have much to learn, young Jedi. Stars is another premium channel that struggled to find a breakout hit. Hey, Ron. Here we are again. Class president and the class clown. If only they'd stuck with Party Down for more than two seasons, audiences might have discovered this comedy was television's best hole-in-the-wall surprise. This is the good stuff. 
It's a personal gift from Dennis Quaid's manager's lawyer. <laughs> I did his kids for a mitzvah. The show centers on a group of struggling artists who work as caterers to pay the bills, crossing paths with various celebrities. Making art is an act of courage. Do you know who said that? Morrison. Steve Gutenberg, Adam Scott, Jane Lynch, Martin Starr, Lizzie Kaplan, and the rest of the cast have fortunately found work elsewhere. But we'd love to see them all reunite for a feature film. Hey, are we having fun yet? Dude, that's why I know you. You're that guy. Hey, are we having fun yet? Right from those beer commercials. That is awesome. Number two, Shameless. Not, you want to see drunk? Don't do this to your kids, Frank. Oh. No, what are you? A tough guy, Steve? You think you're a f***ing tough guy? Because you look like a premenstrual Filipino. The Gallaghers are a dysfunctional, trashy, and of course, shameless clan. But they're ultimately a dedicated family that always has each other's backs. Hello, I'm Wesley Gretzky from DCSF. Oh, shit. Sorry, uh, the, the social worker, right? Yeah, we've, uh, we've been expecting you. I'd like to come in, please, do an inspection. Right, okay, yeah. Um... Hey, listen, is there any chance in me scheduling, you think? Although William H. Macy has picked up a few accolades for his performance as Frank Gallagher, the rest of the cast, particularly Emmy Rossum, rarely get enough credit. We are the, color. the show itself finds just the right balance between incredibly dark, incredibly hilarious, and incredibly heartfelt. Lean, aren't you? becoming one of the rare American remakes that's just as good as its British predecessor, if not better. What's the one thing we need? One word. One thing. Sterilization. Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. For his sake, I hope you can. Clark, you can do this. When we are supposed to be experiencing everything. Exactly, exactly. Like, I can, like, uh... Stay up till 11 now. Do you believe there is a demi monde, Mr. Chandler? A half world between what we know and what we fear. Beep. How's your child bride, Rafi? Ah, deported. Turns out you can't keep a 14 year old you married in Mexico, even if you bought her fair and square and have the receipt. Number one, Orphan Black. My name is Sarah Manning. And this is my unconditional surrender. Any performer can play multiple parts but it takes a true acting marvel like Tatiana Maslany to convince us that each character is a separate being. To Beth for giving us all her strength. To Beth. To Beth. To Beth. To Beth. In Orphan Black, Maslany masters several roles as a group of women who discover their clones. We were implanted by doctors, all of us. You split inside me into two baby girls. And I hate you because I felt you were in danger. The show owes much of its success to Maslany, who finally received an Emmy nomination for her incredible acting feat in 2015. Where am I? Tell me where I am. Who's keeping me here? Maslany aside, Orphan Black further stands out as TV's most underrated show for its well-written main characters, fun side characters, and an involving story that keeps us guessing. You are not Beth. Do you agree with our list? Well, the good news is we're going to see Fat Al. What other underrated shows of the 21st century deserve a wider audience? It's TV for a new century. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I'm sorry.